Hey, what's up guys? Aaron here with the Lean and Mean Academy. Okay, so I don't know if this is gonna be mainly for the newer guys in pressure washing. Um, some of the guys, the veterans who've been around for a while already probably know this. Now look, we can agree that your downstream injector is the giver of all life in this business beyond your chemical, which is, oh, think about it, bleach. Oh wow, it's novel that we use bleach. Some people still think that's a secret or a trade secret. They took our job. Well, I don't know what other bio side you're gonna use, but we use bleach, all right? So whenever you're running bleach through a downstream injector every single day, and this is 13% bleach, this is, well, the highest that I think you probably could commercially find without having some crazy chemical license if they can make it even more concentrated, but it's pretty re readily available. Look, so here we go. I'm gonna show you my little simple trick to keep my downstream injectors working 100% longer. Now, what I mean by 100% is that sometimes, if you've been in this business even for a little bit, you understand that Sometimes downstream injectors just don't work. They just quit working. And that is one of the most frustrating things in the world for me because you gotta build more, put the fittings on, um, take your fittings off if they're stainless because you're not just gonna throw them away. It's, it's, it's not a lot of movement, but it's just kind of frustrating because uh, they cost like 20 bucks a piece. And um, if you're blowing through them one a month or one every few weeks or whatever, it can start to become a recurring bill, okay? And we know that we can't really house wash without a downstream injector. You can have an X-Jet, you can have some of these other things, but it's just not nearly as convenient. So, here's my downstream injector system. Now, as you can see, doesn't look new. I do have stainless fitting right here, and a stainless fitting right there, and there is my five to eight gallon a minute downstream. And I've been using this thing for about six weeks now, all right? And as you can see on my finger, it's coated. It's coated right here. It's coated with WD-40. Now every single day, the one trick is that I shove a, down, a WD-40 thing in there and I lube it up. I spray in here, I spray it in here, and I lay it right there. It stays out of the rain, the bleach is disconnected, and it stays in there. If you do that every single day, you will get long life out of your downstream. Now, eventually it's gonna give up. Look, I'm running corrosive chemical through this little brass thing with a weird fitting. They should really invent something um, something a little more efficient. Uh, but this is all we got right now, okay? Otherwise you're gonna have to, and I got more in the shop, but I just hate putting them together. So I've really taken the time to take care of this guy. Now look, this downstream injector is not a normal chrome ball or brass ball, whatever it may come with, downstreamer. Those are a little cheaper. This is a ceramic ball acid injector, all right? They're a little more expensive and um, I've just found that they last longer by default. They're a little tougher because the ceramic doesn't seize up on the O-ring on the inside. But if you will take that thing off and you will put that little WD-40 nipple down inside that downstreamer, work, the, work the, uh, the spring up and down, make sure it's loose, spray some WD-40 in there, inside it, coat it, and then put it in an area where you can get to it the next morning. Always put it in the same area so you can find it you will notice that you'll probably get double the length of time out of your downstreamers. Now, all you guys have been in the business forever, they would already know this. If you're just getting started, look, you may just be starting your business right now, okay? You may just have rented a, a Home Depot washer like me when I first got started in this business. And look, none of their downstream injectors work. I think they're like filled with cement or something. I don't think they want you running bleach uh, through those uh, systems. It seemed like when I was renting them for 50 bucks a day. But, um, so there's shit anyway. You're gonna have to figure out like an X-Jet system or something because if you're renting pressure washers right now, um, there is just no guarantees. Otherwise, or you could just buy your own downstream injector and you could rent, really, right? Um, you could do that too. But coat that thing inside and out with WD-40 every single time your hose connects to it and you're done using it for the day, just make a habit. And that thing will last 100 times longer. Look, give this video a like. Uh, give it a subscribe if you're wanting to learn um, how to run a lean and mean literal one truck. Well, there's another truck, but 
there's the rig back there pressure washing business um, you can make big profits this way and um, the good thing about this business is we we spray chemicals um, it's not easy it's not an easy business although some would make it sound that way because shit does always break there's something breaking um, something's gonna go out you're gonna get bleach on you so and it's hot all right so all of the above you have to be someone who's willing to work to be in this business but in relativity we are using other people's water spraying it back on their house and um, you know charging them a premium but look some guys do this business and they don't charge a premium and what happens because I'm gonna tell you what happens when your hose blows that hose each hose is about a hundred bucks okay so the first time a guy who's charging a hundred dollars for house washes right his hose blows well he's out of business because all that money he wasn't making enough money to keep the business running right he wasn't making enough money on the house washes in general to keep the thing going now you may say Aaron look I live in a rural area. I live in the middle of nowhere. And no one's gonna pay $200 for a house wash. Well, maybe we should figure out something else to do, right? So, they're also, <laughs> you know, you have to evaluate opportunity costs when you're looking into these things, okay? What is the, the, the value of the opportunity? Can you make, you know, three to five to 10 to $30,000, $40,000 a month with one truck very profitable i promise you it's very profit uh excuse me possible uh, i promise you i know from experience but if you live in an area where the next house is five miles away each direction um you're gonna have to go into a different mindset that's not residential it's gonna be more commercial minded it's gonna be maybe it's big oil tanks right if you live out in Texas somewhere in the middle of nowhere maybe you're cleaning the city hall maybe you know the beauty of being in a rural area is there's always a city hall and there's always you know there's probably not that many people doing this type of service the bad part about being in a rural area is that they're uh, you know it's a DIY mindset right where people are self-sufficient and they may have farmed you know their property they're 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 making crops for themselves guys you know in rural areas there's a lot more shade tree mechanics shall we say a lot less people take their car to the dealership to get it fixed so you're gonna have a lot more people who are going to do their own pressure washing right maybe even if you grew up where I grew up people you know, window cleaning is catching on, but you know, in South Alabama, but it, it definitely didn't exist as a as a real service that people would call, like lawn care or something like that, when I was growing up. So, evaluate the opportunity based on that. If you're not able to make any money um, doing it, or if you got, look, how do I say this? I don't care if there's guys offering house washes for 150 bucks. Okay, you can still charge 300 bucks. 400 bucks because in my city here in Tennessee uh, there's those same guys and I'm still charging what I charge which is triple what they charge okay so it is very possible the biggest thing you're gonna have to do is dip your toe into the market and push these prospects in the direction to see what prices uh, you know the market will will let you uh, push them into now a couple things come into play whenever you're trying to push these prospects into a high ticket environment okay a the funds just have to be there look if you're rolling up to trailer parks man you're not gonna be selling too many five hundred dollar single wide trailer cleanings okay you're just not um, you may sell a couple you will sell a couple but you're not gonna sell them in mass just because the money's not there disposable income isn't there and that needs to be there for this type of service it's not like uh, you know lawn care even lawn care is kind of luxury because everybody's got a mower right everybody's got a push mower hell at the worst they got a push mower hell at the worst they got a weed eater right they could they could figure out a way to do it themselves now we write high-end individuals get their lawn cut uh, even some rent houses just have a guy who cuts a bunch of different rent houses so there's money to be made in that environment the problem is it shuts down right around November and it's 35 to 40 dollars maybe 50 dollars sometimes a hundred dollars per cut and those are on your high high-end clients who have a little bit of property right because there's always somebody with a mower with a z71 rolling around 
who can do it. Now, the difference in pressure washing and window cleaning is that it is a tedious, detail-oriented business. And pressure washing means you're blowing high pressure on someone's siding. And a lot of people are fearful of that, as they should be, because they've seen the damage and they've seen how long it takes their happy ass getting out there on a Saturday to complete these projects. They just don't want to do them, okay? So, if you're gonna get in this business and you're going to start and you want to start on the top end of the high ticket environment of what the potential is for your market go ahead and click the link in the description below i put together a little guide called three controversial mine hijacks to selling high ticket jobs now this could be for landscaping carpet cleaning whatever it's just a couple things that i use daily while i'm bidding um, to get the highest ticket um, while i'm running a small business okay also give this uh, video a like subscribe and keep your downstream injectors lubed up. They'll last 100 times longer. Well, 100% longer, double. Have a good one.